Good morning. Happy Sunday. I've had a number of responses on my video regarding natural slash human rights slash uh, God-given rights slash divine rights. They essentially boil down to two responses. Uh, number one is that they exist, but they don't do anything. And congratulations. Um, that was essentially my point, even though it took me a few tries to walk people to that conclusion in their comments. You have the right to eat, drink, sleep, breathe, defecate. I guess you don't have the right to urinate, so you're going to die. <laughs> but the, uh, yeah. Uh, the other response I've gotten from multiple people is that, but Thomas Jefferson said it in the Declaration of Independence. And I hate to break this to people, but the Declaration of Independence is not law. In order to be a law, it has to be passed by Congress, signed by the President. It has to comport with the Constitution, etc. It has none of that indicia. It is not law. Oh, but the Supreme Court's referenced it multiple times. Absolutely they have. But they've never said it was law. And they've never enforced it as law. Uh, essentially, the, the best argument you have that it has any force at all is the court's... Uh, I don't know, it's not really an admonition, but it's uh, urging people to read the Constitution with the spirit of the Declaration of Independence. But it's still the Constitution that's the controlling document. And is the Constitution inspired by natural law principles? Well, maybe. Maybe. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard to divine the thoughts of all of the people who were involved in it got to remember that a lot of the people who were involved in it were judges and lawyers. Judges and lawyers at that time would have been well steeped in the English common law traditions, which also protected life, liberty, and property. So, I mean, was, uh, was John Locke inspired by English common law? Or was English common law inspired by John Locke? That's a that's a good question, considering English common law existed long before John Locke did. Um, I'm going to guess he was inspired by English common law. It's amazing. It's amazing how that kind of philosophy developed in England, and it didn't develop in I don't know. Let's say Germany. It has a different tradition of more stifling laws. Uh, so, at the end of the day, uh, if it is just an appeal to Thomas Jefferson, that's just, a, that's just a blatant appeal to authority. He was a politician. He wasn't God. Uh, politicians can lie and do lie. I mean, he owned slaves, for fuck's sake. So, you know, my natural law, my right to liberty, oh, but not for you, because you've got dark skin. You know, it's just, uh, it's a bad appeal to authority. Anyway. That was number one. Number two, uh, Jack, GED Jack, the uh, the guy who couldn't ma maintain his weight long enough to finish his uh, obligations to the army. The guy who was fired. Oh, excuse me, not fired. He's pulling the same Damon Jones bullshit. Resigned in lieu of termination from two sheriff's offices. Uh, he pulled down his video because he realized how stupid he was. I don't know. He didn't tell me he realized how stupid he was. And he probably didn't realize how stupid he was. But apparently, apparently I must have hit true with some of my statements. Who wants to bet a nickel? I should ask Salvaggio because Salvaggio actually probably went through Jack's closet, but who wants to bet a nickel that Jack has his old sheriff's deputy uniforms 
all pressed and starched and hanging in his closet. We well, you want to bet they're covered in cum stains too from him jerking off thinking about, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, that was a dark, that was a dark path. I shouldn't walk that dark path. Anyway, I could hear, I could hear Colin L screaming out, Sodomite! <laughs> right now. Oh, good times. And finally, um, Earl found a rape case where the, uh, rape victim was exonerated and the rape charges were dropped and therefore Earl's innocent too or or something here's the uh here's the fun fact uh, he's gonna he's gonna crusade for a uh, victim of false rape allegations rights it's really bad to be a convicted rapist fighting for those rights because well you were convicted uh and there are already are protections in place there are legal protections uh, you could look up Brianna or Shell Harmon who caught three felonies, three felony convictions for false rape accounts in Texas. You're welcome. Uh, tampering with physical evidence and tampering with the government record. And there are also private causes of action. If your accuser has any money to make it worthwhile, uh, there is a malicious prosecution. Thanks for watching. Earl's useless. Have a great day.